So um, before I go further into the demonstration, I like to explain a little bit about my company. So I am from Wait, okay. So I am from Statwork Group. So Statwork Group are based on the computer national analytic, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. So we are data science and analytic solution. So our HQ um, office is based in Malaysia with branches in Singapore and India. So uh, we provide two kind of services, which is distribution. We distribute license and we implement the service by including training and consulting. So this is our uh, leading solution partner. So we have various partner uh, from IBM, Tipco, to Perceptron and S3. So for the eViews software, these are the key customer that use eViews in, the, in their company. So you can have a look uh, on the customer that use the eView. It's come from various countries. Okay, so next uh, I like to explain to you a little bit about eViews. Uh, for this uh, section, I want you to have a basic idea what eViews can be can do. So eViews actually uh, good in hand, handling time series data, which means uh, it's good in forecasting and do econometric. So eViews actually owned by IHS Market Limited. And I believe that eViews uh, update their version almost every year. And the latest one is uh, version 11. So in the demonstration that I will do after this, I will be using eViews version 11. Okay. Uh, so so uh, eViews actually uh, a software that uh, working with time series, cross section, panel or longitudinal data. So by using eViews, you can actually uh, manage your data to do some analysis and then you can perform econometric statistical analysis. You can also generate forecast and uh, module simulation. Other than that, eViews also can produce some uh, graph and table. So this is a few of the example of the interface of eViews. Okay. When you open your uh, eView software, I believe that the interface are user friendly because the interface are kind of similar to other Microsoft Office uh, software. So uh, this is the screenshot of the software. So after this in the demonstration, I will go through each of the function in the eViews. Okay, so in eViews also it's come with Windows integration which is you can do the drag and drop file into the eViews and eViews can read your Excel file by just you drop the file from the Excel file into the software. And then it also come with a copy and paste function. So it also, uh, eViews also have multiple window display, which means that if you uh, try to do analysis or you try to, to produce, for example, the graph, so uh, the output that you do in the uh, equation uh, over here will come up as a new windows. So several steps that you do in your analysis will have several windows that pop up in the eViews. So each of the window you can save uh, individually uh, separate name. Okay. So the next part is uh, the import and export function. So if you can uh, read uh, over 20 popular data formats, for example Excel, uh, SAS, SPSS or even um, a text file. Uh, and then uh, the good thing about if you actually it come with frequency conversion which means that uh, uh, as you know, if you, uh, we will use time series data in the eViews. So you can actually sort your data like from increasing to decrease and you can like select specific sample and, can, and you can do, for example, you want to change the data uh, set from uh, monthly to yearly to daily. So uh, this is what eViews can do uh, for your data. 
So uh, this list over here are the powerful analytical tools that come with the eViews. So you can do a basic statistical analysis, uh, time series statistic, panel and pool data statistic. You can also do ARMA forecasting and few single equation estimation. So as I told you before, eViews can produce graph and table. So these are the few example graph and uh, graph that can be produced by using eViews. Uh, a good thing about eViews actually, uh, if you have multiple column that you select, you can either choose to plot it in one graph or you can separate it uh, individually. Okay, the next one is uh, eViews also come with traditional command line and programming, which is uh, uh, in eViews, the white part over here uh, is the coding part, which is you can simply just type in your equation or your estimation, and then you can just simply uh, click enter and it will come out your output over here. Other than that, you can just simply click the each of the button in the uh, windows that pop up here. Okay, next, uh, it also come with command explorer, which means uh, in the help button, you will get few PDF file, which help you to do some, uh, uh, it come with few modules, for example, like if you want to know how to do forecasting, if you like to do some graphing, all the steps are come in the PDF file. And you can also, um, and then you can also uh, log in into their website if you have further question, and then you can ask in uh, the community session. Okay, uh, the new uh, function that add into the latest EView version, which is uh, version 11, is GeoMap. So in this demonstration, I will show you how you can produce mapping uh, by doing the GeoMap function. Okay, so, uh, so the next uh, is I like to demonstrate uh, eViews uh, specifically to do some basic uh, forecasting and after we finish with the forecasting I will go through a little uh, quick a little bit on the geomaps function so if you have any question uh, during my session you can just simply type your question in the chat box and at the end of the session I will answer the question so let me open my e-view Okay. okay, so in this uh, demonstration, I will focus on uh, basic forecasting and the geo map. I hope you can see my eViews uh, interface. Okay, so uh, the first uh, section that uh, I like to explain to you are forecasting. So as you know, eViews offer a powerful and easy to use forecasting tools that allow you to obtain forecast from your estimated model. So in this uh, demonstration, I will explain the basic procedure for forecasting from a single equation. So uh, the main topics that I will cover in this tutorial are uh, basic forecasting involved between static and dynamic, uh, forecast, how to evaluate your forecasting uh, method, and then I will also do forecasting with a uh, exogenous variable and with lag dependent variable and also I will show you how to do with our matters. And finally, I will show you uh, how to forecasting with uh, auto series. So when you open your um, eViews, this is uh, the interface for the eViews. The top part over here are the menu button. So, uh, all of the function are basically like if you want to save your file or you want to import your Excel into the eViews and then you want to do some uh, undo if uh, the step that you do are wrong, you want to undo, you can uh, click the edit button and object over here are to uh, bring out, uh, bring out uh, your output into PDF and then um, 
uh, few that I like to highlight is a quick button, which is you want to generate your series and then do some equation. You can do, you can click quick. And as I told you before, um, uh, if you come with a few module or PDF files, so under help button, you can go to the PDF documentation and it will provide to you few modules that you can refer. So uh, the white box over here is a command uh, section, which is uh, every equation or estimation that you want to key in by just typing your uh, uh, equation, you can just like put in, in the white box and then you click enter. And then all the output will come out in the black box over here. So for the capture, uh, box uh, over here is the step that you do. For example, the first step uh, you put in your data set. So it will show you that you put in the data and then next you do some graphic or plotting. It will show you the next step that you do. Okay. So the black part over here is the, the pop-up window that you put in into your e-views. So as for now, let's proceed with uh, our demonstration on the forecasting technique. So I will use uh, example data. I just simply drag and drop the data in here. So the first step that you get is to alter your data, which means that if you want to do some change for your data, uh, this is uh, the, uh, they, they have like four steps to change your data. So if you, uh, if you wish that uh, you don't want to change anything about your data, you just can click finish. So in the first section, uh, it will show you the column that you have in your Excel data. So you have date um, over here, uh, and then you have payroll. Payroll over here means the employment level. And then uh, you have I ISM, which is the, uh, which is uh, the, Institute for Supply Management Manufacturing Index. And then you have IP. IP means the industrial production. And then you got the T-bill 3M, which means the three months US treasury rate. So all of these are come in the Excel file. So you can change the column into row by clicking the, the this function. So if you wish to change into row, you can do this function. As for now, let's just proceed with original data. Okay, so the next step is you want to change the header name, which is the observation of your data set. You can change it, the type of your observation into name, description, or date. Okay, next is, uh, next, if you wish to change the name of the column for the Excel file, you can change over here by changing the name section. And then if you wish to put some description on the name, you can put it over here. And then you can also change the data type for each column uh, by clicking the data type function. And next, the final step is uh, if you want to change the structure of your data, which means uh, in e-views actually, it is smart enough to uh, detect your frequency of your data. As you can, if you scroll for the Excel, the original data, you can see it's come by monthly. I have like January until uh, December from 1960 until 2014. So uh, it uh, automatically read as monthly data, but you can change it into, uh, into how, whatever you want to choose, for example, like multi year annual or quarterly so you can change it by click the regular frequency okay and then after you finish all you click finish and it will come up with this uh, pop-up so this pop-up mean that if you change uh, value for example in ip column some value if you wish to change it uh, accordingly to the excel file that you put outside the e-views, so you just click yes. So anything that you change in the e-views will link into your Excel file. So if you do not want to change anything in your Excel original file, you just click no. So over here are the pop-up window that I tell you before. 
So in this section, range and sample, uh, it show you uh, from what year to what year uh, your data is. And then uh, it will tell you the how many observation that you have in the data set. So each of your column before in the Excel, it will have separate file in the eViews. So the first step that I like to show you is uh, uh, the data set that we have, the value for each column that we have in the data set. So I will choose payroll, IP, ISM, and the T bill 3M. So you can open all uh, of the selected variable as a group. Okay, so this is the original sheet file uh, that come from your Excel file. So as you can see over here, all of the series are uh, come from 96T up until 2013. So you have all the value for payroll, IP, ISM, and T-bill up until 2013 on March. So this is the historical data. And then uh, when, uh, if you notice up from March until end of 2014, you can see that there's no value for payroll because uh, for this part, I will show you how to forecast starting from April until last. But uh, in IP, ISM and the T-bill, uh, it already come up with the forecast value. So my main purpose over here is to do forecast using the payroll series. Okay. So how can you do the forecast is, uh, the first thing is you need to uh, key in your uh, equation in the command uh, box. So I already um, choose my equation over here. So you can type your equation in the command box and you could just simply and uh, click enter. And then this is the um, uh, this is the uh, output that come out after you enter the command. So you can save this output as EQ one. Okay. So uh, let me explain a little bit on the command section. So in this command, we use expand and months, which means that we create twelve dummy variable and one for each month of the year. So these are the seasonal factor. And uh, because we have include a constant um, variable, so we need to exclude one of the dummy variable uh, in order so that we not uh, fall in the dummy variable trap. So we are using the drop first function, which is we exclude the January. So that's for the command section. Okay. So next, uh, from the output over here, we can actually see the uh, plotting graph by click view and then choose actual fitted residual and choose graph to see the uh, residual actual and the fitted in uh, single graphing. Okay, so as you can, as you know before, uh, the data are from 1960 up until 2013. So these are the plotting. So the next step, if we want to produce a forecast for the payroll series is, uh, we choose the equation number one over here. It come up with new file. When you save uh, the group of several selected variable, it will come up with new uh, equation. And then over here, as you notice, there's a forecast button. So you just simply click forecast. And then uh, you can name you can name your equation into F, okay. And then uh, select from year 2013, you want to focus 2013 uh, from April up into, you can just simply uh, put this or you can type last, okay. So it come until the end on, of the data set. Okay, so make sure that you click the insert actual for out of sample observation. Uh, 
and then choose uh, coefficient uncertain, uncertainty and then uh, choose graph for forecast and then do the evaluation for the forecast. Then you click OK. Okay, so this is the uh, forecasting, uh, the plotting of the forecasting value. Okay, so next I will show you the uh, the value for each of data. So over here you can see the value by clicking the EQ01F with the original data which is payroll and you open it as a group and you can see the value uh, from 1960 as you can observe here uh, the two series are identical when uh, looking at the historical data this is because uh, we select the function of insert actual for out of sample observation because our sample are focusing on 2013 until the last uh, observation so that's why uh, the historical data will be the same so as you can see before this i show you that there's no value on the payroll but we may after we do the equation and then we do the forecast it will come out the value from 2013 april until uh, December 2014. So this is the forecasted value for Peru. Okay. So next is uh, so next if we want to forecast sample that entire range that be in the entire range of the work file, which means from 1916 until 2014. So uh, the first step that you can do is uh, you click the equation one and then same like before click the forecast and then name it as like for example f3 and then choose from 1960 uh, january until december 2014 and then you just uh, click ok and then it will show you the graphing the plotting of historical with the forecasted value and then the forecasted table, forecasted evaluation table. Okay, so uh, when we set the forecast sample to the entire work file range, uh, it is possible to check for forecast accuracy. So this is forecast accuracy. If you compare the forecasted value from the model, uh, to the actual data and compute the forecast evaluation table. So if we want to inspect more detail on difference between actual, which is payroll, and the forecasted on the uh, EQ01F3, uh, you can open them as a group and plot them together. So open it as a group and then uh, plot them together okay so you can see over here the, the values differ over the historical range because in equation 1 f3 uh, series come from the fitted value of equation 1 whereas the payroll series contain the actual data so of course you can see the eq01 uh, f3 series is also longer uh, because it's include the future over the period 2013 until 2014. So the next step that I want to show you is how to do forecasting with exogenous variable for out of sample forecast. So in this uh, example, we break down the sample uh, as, as uh, estimation sample from 1960 until 2008 and we would like to forecast from 2009 until 2014. So the first step you do is you key in the uh, command, the equation into the command section. Okay. Then you simply click enter. Okay. So this is the output for the, uh, the next equation. So you can name it as EQ02. Okay. 
So next is uh, let us produce a forecast value for equation two. So the same step as before. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, you click forecast, and then you name it as eq2 underscore f, and then uh, under forecast sample, uh, type from year two thousand nine. Uh, January 2009 until 2014, uh, December 2014. And then it's the same step, you just click OK. okay. And then over here, you will get the uh, forecast graph for uh, equation number two. So you can also see the difference between original data, which is payroll, with equation two underscore F. So you can open it as group. And then you can produce graph. Okay. So you can see the difference between this value and over here value. You can actually zoom in. For example, you don't want to see the historical. You can click the slider over here and go up. Until 2009, you can see the payroll with the equation to focus. Okay, so as you noticed before, the graph, the plotting come with focus evaluation. So in this uh, focus evaluation, I will explain to you a little bit the meaning for each of the uh, where the value in here. So over here you can see uh, the forecast sample from what year to what year that you do the forecasting. And then you can see the observation number. Oh, you can see this, okay. There's a 72 uh, observation when you do the forecasting. And then you, you also will get the root mean square error which is RMSE, which means that it is a standard deviation of the forecast error. And then you, uh, you, you, between the RMSE and the MAE, uh, it actually depends on the scale of the dependent variable. While the next two statistics, which is uh, MAE and the MAPE, are uh, scale invariance. So for the till inequality coefficient, uh, lies between zero until one. So if uh, it is close to zero, it's indicate that it has a perfect fit. So for the bias proportion, it means that it indicates how far is the mean of the forecast from the mean of the actual series. And for the variance proportion, uh, it is indicate how far is the variance of the forecast from the variance of the actual series. And for the convenience as well, is measure the remaining unsystematic forecasting error. Okay, next let's go into forecasting with lag, in, lag dependent variable. So, over the time, uh, time series model used for forecasting are uh, include with a lag dependent variable. So when there is present of lag dependent variables, it will complicate forecasting because I believe that there is an issue as how to evaluate the dependent variable that appear on the right hand side of the equation, the box forecast evaluation before. Okay, so how can you deal with the lag dependent variable? Uh, you can do the dynamic forecasting and the static, static forecasting. So the dynamic forecasting actually use the forecasted value of the lag dependent variable while the static forecasting use the actual value of the lag dependent variable. So for out of sample forecasting, uh, dynamic forecasting is usually uh, the only possible approach. Uh, this is due to the lack of the actual data, which means that static forecasting are impossible to do. Okay, so the next one, I show you the step-by-step -step to do the forecasting with lag dependent variable. 
So the first one is you need to specify a model with lab dependent variable on the right hand side of the equation. So the model that I choose over here is this one. Okay, you can just key in into this. So this is uh, the output result when you use the uh, lab dependent variable. As you can see, all the lab dependent variable under are uh, in the right hand side of the equation. So after that, you can save the equation as equation four, for example. And then uh, you can do the first thing we would like to see is the graphing. So you can click view actual fitted residual with graph. And then uh, we can see that the model seems to perform better now because the fit appear better. So because uh, why the fit are better? Because there's a presence of lag dependent variable in the uh, in the equation. So let's produce a dynamic forecast for the payroll series based on our equation number four. So the click equation number four. Sorry. Okay. And then uh, as same as the step before, click forecast. And then you can name the forecast to equation four underscore dyn, which means dynamic. Then you can name this as me. And over here, you can see the method are different. As I told you before, this is the solution how you can handle uh, lab dependent. Either you choose dynamic forecast or static, static forecast. So for now, I will show you the dynamic forecast. Over here, we change into 2009 until 2014. Okay, so you can see the plotting for the uh, dynamic forecast. So you can see the coffee, co you can see the confident error bands widen. You can see from here up until here, it will go larger, widen uh, toward the end. This is because the dynamic forecasting used the forecast value of the uh, lab dependent variable. So the forecast error tend to compound over time resulting in the larger error band the further out that we are forecast before. Sorry. Okay. So next is uh, let's produce the forecast for the uh, static forecast. So same as before. Uh, name it as that. And over here, and, uh, and over here, choose static forecast and same as before to, from 2009 until 2014. And then click OK. And you can see the difference between like, uh, between. Um, the difference between dynamic and static. So in this uh, static, uh, we, uh, static forecast are one step ahead forecast only. So they use actual value of lag dependent variables in order to perform the forecast. So since we have the actual data for payroll series before up until 2013 on March, so if you can only produce forecast for the period from 2009 until 2013. So you can also compare the for two of the forecast value by clicking the payroll. Choose uh, stat and the dynamic and open it as a group. And the view as graph. Okay, you can see the plotting for uh, for static and the dynamic. As you can see, for the historical are the same, but the different 
you can zoom out and see the difference over here. See the difference between the uh, dynamic, static, and the, uh, the original forecasted value. Okay. The next step is I like to show you how can you do for forecasting with ARMA error. So in uh, ARMA, in the presence of ARMA terms, uh, you need to uh, specify a model with two AR term. So over here, I already choose my uh, equation that involve two ARMA, two AR. Let's click enter. And as you can see, it, it include the AR uh, variable. So you can name it as equation. Okay. Okay, next is we do the forecasting with the AR term. So same as before, uh, click the forecast button. And in the forecast name, you can name it as EQ06 underscore. So it's same as I uh, before, with, which is we do for both dynamic and static. So first, you do the dynamic one. To choose from 2009 up until you choose dynamic. Okay, that's all. And then you click OK. So this is for uh, dynamic uh, forecast. Okay, so next for the uh, static Q0C uh, underscore stat. Choose static forecast from 2009 until 2014. This is uh, the uh, the forecast by using static. So you can see the difference between dynamic and static over here. Okay, so uh, let's proceed with the ARMA error, which is uh, the error R0. So uh, same as before, you just click forecast, but uh, if you want to do the ARMA error that are zero, you just simply click uh, ignore ARMA. So you do the uh, error for ARMA, which is zero. You can name it. So this is for the dynamic, then for static, static, EQ, from 2009 up until 2014. So choose the ignore ARMA. So those are for the uh, ARMA error that are zero. So next, uh, let's try to do the MA error. Before this, I show you the AR error. So let's do the uh, MA error. So for MA error, you need to put in your equation. For now, I use AR1, AR2. For MA, you just simply uh, change MA1. So enter. I can save it as EQ8. Okay. So you can do the forecasting for the MA. Uh, you can change into the same step as before. Compare between the dynamic and uh, static for armor. Okay, so this is for dynamic. Okay. 
So you just click OK. Then we show you for uh, ME equation. All right. So um, next, let's move on to the forecasting with auto series equation. So uh, one of the most useful feature in the views is the ability to estimate and forecast from equation that are specified using expression or auto series. So issue with auto series normally arise when the dependent variable is specified using an expression. So I'm gonna illustrate to you how you can do the auto series forecasting. So the first one you need to uh, in your auto series equation. So uh, this is the equation. Okay. So this is for auto series output. So when you do the auto series, um, you can see the difference in the forecast uh, method is uh, the series to forecast are come with two different variables, which is the payroll and the, the log function for the payroll. Okay, so over here, for example, we want to see the, save it first, question nine, sorry. Save this first, and then you click forecast, and then name it as level, and then same as before from 2009 until the end, and then uh, click OK. Then this is the equal the forecast for uh, auto series by using payroll. So for Log, you can see the difference over here. Log, you choose log over here and then change from 2009 to 2014 and click OK. This is for the log function. Okay, next. Uh, we would like to uh, est to estimate by using first differencing in the auto series. So before this, we just put uh, auto series function, but now we would like to put, uh, before this, we use log, right? So after this, we would like to see uh, the difference, the differencing. So I will, as you can see, the difference are in the log over here change it to T, which means difference. Okay, the, and then save it as equation 10. Okay. And then you can do the uh, forecasting for uh, differencing. When you click the forecast, you can see the difference before this. Uh, it will have the D function. Before this, we have log. So same step if you want to do um, the forecasting for uh, forecasting for different dynamic difference dynamic from year two thousand nine up until up until two thousand fourteen. This is for dynamic, okay, and then for difference then for uh, difference then you you can uh you can choose to to use payroll only or the uh, difference functions. For now, let's do the difference. Okay. We'll get the forecasting value over here. 
Okay, so I think for the forecasting technique, I cover all that I told you before. So let's have a quick view on the how to use a geomap in the latest e-view. So in, okay, let me take my file first. Okay, for the uh, geo maps, uh, if you uh, introduce the ability to do the, to lock and display geographic maps by using, uh, by using the geo maps function. So I hope you can see my, yeah, uh, this is the, example that I use to do the geomaps. So uh, in the e-views, uh, latest e-views actually support maps that contain in the shape file, file format. So once a map has been loaded into the e-views work file, it can be tied to the data in the work file, allowing displaying of series value inside the map. Or you can use the new color map engine to color the geomap based on uh, series value. So the step to do the reviews, uh, the geo map, okay. The first uh, step is you click the uh, object and then choose the new object and then choose geo map and then uh, click OK. And then over here, you need to drop your uh, shape file. So my shape file is here. Okay. So you need to match your uh, attribute name with the series. Okay. And then you can change the coloring of the map. For example, I like to use single range for okay. and then I start lower range from zero uh, until 160. Okay. Then uh, for inside range, I like to do gradient color, which is one and the red one. And then over here, okay. So next, just click, okay. Wait, let me just start. Okay, okay. Okay, click object to maps. Single range. I think, okay, I get it. Okay, so this is uh, the geomap. You can actually change the 
label by putting the name for the population total. So you can actually change into, for example, you like to see the population for the female here. So it will change according to the gradient color. So, so far, I think this is the of uh, the quick view on how you can insert your shape file into this uh, e-view and how to do the mapping for uh, geomaps. So I think that's overall for my demo session for today. So if you have any uh, question on uh, the license, you can refer to this email. Uh, okay, so the first one is, okay. okay, let me check first for file format. Okay, uh, for the file format, I believe that uh, the shape file are in shape format, shape in depth format, and attribute format, and the spatial in depth format. For the shape file, I believe it's only the format are only in uh, shape file format. For the question of besides shape file format, any other format that it support. For now, it's only open file format developed by S3, which is a shape file, only shape file. Okay, so next question is how you select range from geo file format. Mm, in for range, I think I show you before. Uh, in the when you click your object, okay, for range, you click click your geo maps and then you insert your uh, shape file. Okay, the range are in over here. As you can see, the lower range up and the upper range. So this part, for example, for the series in the mapping, for example, uh, if you want to do the total population, you just put in total po population name. Over here, you can see the name, the name of your column. You can put in as a series over here and then you can change the range from zero to what range you want. And in this color section, you can uh, indicate uh, the, uh, maybe the brighter the color, the higher the uh, population value. So this is uh, the answer for the range. Okay. So, I think that's all for today. So, thank you so much uh, for having me here. So, if there are any question or any, uh, any question regarding to the license, you can uh, go and email us in this email. Okay. So, I think... That's all. So thank you so much. Goodbye and have a nice day.